What's up Rockstars? Welcome to the ultimate board game update for you guys. This is going to be a huge one. I'm going to try and go as quick as possible, but we got a lot to cover in June. There's just, there's so much to discuss. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate the videos I make every single week for you guys, and you can give even a dollar a month, there is a link down below. Additionally, a warm welcome to Sean, Donahue, and Jordan Gardner. Guys, welcome so much to the family. I hope you enjoy your stay over here on Patreon. With that out of the way, let's jump into a quick sponsor blurb, and then we're going to go into the heavy things. Guys, into the AM is a long time sponsor of this channel and that is because they make quality items that I love to tell you guys. They look freaking sweet. I'm wearing one right now. This is a, one of their new ones. Looks awesome. As you can tell, I get compliments about these shirts all the time. They look great, they feel great, they fit well, and they continue to do so. I've worn these dozens and dozens and dozens of times, washed them all, they look brand freaking new. It's really great quality stuff. They got some new designs out, looks freaking sweet. I really love this kind of glow-in-the-dark Tron-like design that they got going on there. Very much looks like one of my retro synthwave kind of, um, you know, 80s styled techno uh, albums that I listen to just I, I love it the 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 alien stuff they've been doing lately with the abductions whether it's it's this one over here or this new abduction tee look freaking great there's a lot to love here go in and check it out there's a link in the description below with a discount code 10% off go ahead and use it that works on everything any sale they have anything you want they have the big shop three for $60 so you can get three of these plus the 10% off link down below Thank you so much. Let's actually now just go into it. Guys, there's so much to talk about. Community-wise, I'm going to plug in the group that you guys have been joining. 1,300 of you have now joined this group, and I must say it is already taking off, and we're having uh, just a wonderful time sharing all sorts of fun things. Uh, my cat destroyed my Massive Darkness 2 setup, so I went and asked people if they had any recommendations. Open up a box. We're going to try that, see if that works. Seriously, though, there's a lot of great stuff here. Um, uh, Mark here just shared his thoughts from the UK Games Expo. So there's a lot here that you can enjoy and I highly recommend you join down in the link below. Okay, now, come on announced a new game, their next Kickstarter, Cyberpunk 27.7 Gangs of Night City, the board game. This is their next IP-driven extravaganza. <laughs> um, as you can see, it does have a Keanu Reeves mini, and they are doing sculpted bases, but more like the monolith-style sculpted bases, where it's just texture. It's not like the uh, Marvel Zombies is at all, uh, which, is, which is kind of unfortunate. So that is coming out. Um, it is an airy control game that has, narr that has like a narrative thing to it. So it's a campaign-based narrative area control game now how that looks like i don't know it sounds like you'll be uh reacting to different events that come up and stuff like that but uh it, it it sounds kind of intriguing but also kind of disappointing if that makes sense because if it's an area control game that means that uh the combat isn't going to be like uh super tactile and strategic in that sense if you know when it comes to like uh positioning and stuff like that so um yeah kind of interesting i guess uh it's it has the ip branding on it though and it's got come on so uh, oh, the box they showed was actually pretty skinny. Like it looked like it was about this thick. Uh, so I don't know how many minis they're planning. They only showed about uh, nine ish, I think, on the stream, something like that. Um, nine, twelve, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, it's it. it th th there you go. There's the next game that they're coming out with. Uh, oh, uh, Eric Lang is attached to it. Uh, his name is on the box, so there is that. And they mentioned Blood Rage and Rising Sun Ankh. Uh, when they talked about area control. So it sounds like it's his take on area control, but with some narration added into it. And then a nice healthy healthy dosing of Cyberpunk 277 IP paint on top of it. Uh, yeah, go into it expecting a lot in shipping because that's just how the world is right now. Okay, there is an update on Blacklist Miniatures Fantasy Series 1. I know, I know, Blacklist is still out. They have been sending out hours of need. They are still making this work slowly but surely, which is great. I'm glad to see that. Uh, it would be awesome if they can kind of make it through all of this and then kind of lean out 
as a company on what they're doing and, and how they're operating on Kickstarter and uh, just kind of do better from here on. There's been a few companies that have done that. I'm going to be talking about one here shortly um, that's kind of doing that. What I'm going to be talking about here, though, they, and they have this great long update, which is very nice to see. The main part here is this one here, talking about toxicity. Um, I'm not going to read that whole thing. You can pause if you want and read that. There you go. You can pause. I'll let you pause. Welcome back. <laughs> um, okay, so here's 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 the thing here. Apparently, and for those that didn't pause, uh, there there's been a report of a backer antagonizing somebody's child that likes the, like blacklist games like uh, Kickstarters and stuff like that. And really, what they're just trying to say is like calm the freak down and. Before I go into any more of this update or any updates in the future, um, I think we all kind of need to calm the freak down sometimes, right? We we get so worked up in things that we care about or that we're interested in. Um, and then, of course, with the Internet, there's, you know, a, a huge... Uh, kind of separation between, you know, any kind of physical threat or, um, uh, you know, accountability and uh, just, you know, be good model citizens, I guess, I suppose. And and um, to say that people have bad taste in campaigns and then just leave it at that and don't threaten children. Uh, so, yeah, don't do that, I guess. Uh, that's, that's sad that that's even a thing. It's sad that that's even a, um, a bullet point in here. And honestly, it's probably the, the low point of this entire video. Just, just the fact that that's even a thing is, is rather pathetic and we need to grow past that. Moving on. Mythic Games. Sam, uh, is leaving Mythic Games. He'll be, uh, leaving, uh, I believe at the end of the month here. So he kind of has a little bit of time. Um, and, uh, uh, Helena is also leaving and I think a few others as well. Uh, so what is going on here? Why is Sam leaving? Is Mythic Games, uh, you know, just like saying, no, you're out, blah, blah, blah. You did a bad. No, no. Uh, actually they're very happy with Sam and they're very happy with, with all of their, uh, em current employees and, uh, and former employees even. Uh, this is the same thing as Blacklist Games, the same thing that Monolith did. Actually, this is a real big point on Monolith. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll come back to this, I promise, uh, right after this. They also announced a new game. This is a retail-only game. It has four miniatures and some tokens, and that's how you play the game. Uh, it is very much a small box, little kind of you know, uh, a retail oriented, uh, game, one that you could probably find in like a Walmart or target or something like that. Like not even like dedicated games. This is small, but still with their, you know, fantastic minis and stuff like that, that they do with their manufacturer and whatnot. So the reason I wanted to show this is because I wanted, and I'll let them talk more about it. Um, so I'm not going to go into huge detail though. I had it kind of explained to me. I actually reached out to Leo to kind of get some information on this before I talked about it. Um, just trying to see what was up because I was thinking something and it turns out I was right. They are, uh, uh, you know, just, just looking at the current situation and trying to be a responsible company. Uh, they make giant, humongous games. If you guys got Solomon Kane or even Super Fantasy Brawl, the first round, um, or if you've gotten Joan of Arc or something like that, like, you know, like there, there's like big games and there's mythic games big, right? And so, uh, they make these giant gigantic games, these huge scoped games. And, uh, then with like the shipping and stuff like that, that they've been eating, you know, th th they didn't come back and like ask for, for money to ship Solomon Kane. Uh, because it was late and, and they kind of took it, but I'm sure that costs a lot. Right. And, 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 and so they've been trying to like, get out what they've promised, right? But then looking at the current situation, look at where the trajectory is and just trying to be the smartest kind of game company they can as a business. Uh, and part of that is leaning out as much as they can. So that's why you're going to see some like retail games like this. That's why you, you know, you, you might even see some like, uh, delays or anything like that when it comes to games and Kickstarters and whatever crowdfunding stuff they have planned out. That's why you'll see stuff like this, uh, the Sam and Helena thing. Um, it, it reminds me a little bit, um, minus the whole like failure thing of, uh, Monolith when they did the uh, Beyond the Monolith and that bombed and they like leaned out and they've been doing great since then, right? In other words, like, um, and, and, and Mythic Games is a pretty big company too and they still are. 
Uh, but I think that's the idea, right? That's that's why they uh, allowed Sam to like you know post this stuff like that because there's no you know uh, we hate you <laughs> on either side. It's a very mutual thing, and they want to help him you know kind of get set up with a, a a good path forward and and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I think they're handling this quite well, and I think this is the smartest way to do it. And I think that's a smart thing to do as a company is to just try and be as efficient as possible and, and kind of lean out. I think uh, um, in times that are good, companies in general, this is not just Mythic Games, tend to bloat up, right, as you can. Um, and then when times are down, you kind of have to trim down a little bit. Um, and so that's kind of what what's going on there. Moving on from Castles of Burgundy Special Edition, 1.6 million. They've been doing some awesome stuff, by the way. If you look at like their 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 daily updates, like the first was the Vineyard expansion. It's all like plastic and looks pretty and all this stuff. Uh, so they did that for a few times. Now there's the final one there. But then they also did uh, like new tiles and sculpts and for the different castles, you can see they actually look different. Right, these standing backs are so nice. I was complaining about the Mass of Darkness 2, like cheap, almost plastic bag uh, that they had, and like, and then you see this, and it's like, wow, that looks really nice. They're like, they are, they're even standing bags. They have a little bottom to it that's stitched in, so that's super cool. Look forward to see what's on day 11. They are definitely adding some. This is like premium. Uh, so if you like this game at all, or if you've been interested in it, this is the edition to get. Next up we have Batman the Arkham Asylum Files. Now guys, this came out of nowhere, right? Like nobody knew about this. I didn't know about this. And it's like my thing. I cover this crap, especially DC stuff because I'm a huge fan. So the fact that I didn't know about this, nobody else shows uh, most uh, half the story on why you see only 312 backers on a Batman board game. Uh, the other half is the cost. So first of all, it's just the word out is just not there, right? Um, but then the other thing is it's expensive. So they, uh, super premium, by the way. If you are interested, by the way, again, all of these are linked down below. Watch this video. It'll help out actually quite a bit uh, because it'll help out more than this and it'll help out more than the page, actually. Go on and watch this video. That's very helpful. But if you look at what's in here, they have like this super premium uh, like terrain and stuff like this, like really nice, big uh, um, uh, buildings, at least four that I've seen, possibly more. It's kind of hard. Plus all these different uh, game boards and uh, components and stuff like that. It's an AR board game. So you're using your phone to kind of scan different things and whatnot and do different puzzles and kind of interact. And it says here that there's five to six hours of um, uh, kind of the, the 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 game, it's kind of like an escape room board game, if that makes sense. You're trying to figure things out and kind of put things together, and they have several of these. So Unleashed Mayhem, one hundred and seventy dollars is this box, and this box, by the way, is like is like that. It's it's a big box. There's a lot in there for sure. Three hundred and thirty eight for the second one, and now you're seeing kind of what the issue is, right? And then five hundred seven for the third one, and now. First of all, super expensive, right? And then 625 if you want like some like a newspaper <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, here's here's the thing. Obviously expensive, but honestly, you can charge whatever it is that people are willing to pay, but people are willing to pay based off of not just what you're getting, but how it's shown. So notice nothing in here really showed what's in these boxes now i get that a lot of it is um you know maybe a mystery or something like that but at the end of the day if you're wanting somebody to pledge 169 dollars, you need to break down what's in this box if you are wanting 330 dollars for two you want to break down everything additional they get what do they get how how is this cool how is this you know uh, all, you want you need to know all of that if that makes sense there's three wave shipping because you ship each box separately and you kind of get them on different times and um th at the end of the day it is just a five to six hour campaign now it looks like a lot of fun with the right people i would have a blast five to six hours with this thing for sure easily easily um but is five to six hours worth 170 bucks i guess it, it depends on on you and how and your bank account i suppose but that's kind of the issue so multitude of things first of all just very expensive very premium of an experience they have voice acting and live action stuff and all sorts of stuff in there so they definitely put in the money in there 
Um, so, so I get it. I get, I get the price. So it is expensive, but you got to earn that. And you earn that by building a community around it. Goodwill outreach, showing everything that you're getting, right? Like making it obvious where this, why this is such a great deal for people. And it's not really doing that. So I, yeah, they're definitely going to do a relaunch, uh, obviously. And what that'll look like at the end, I don't know, but I, I think the game actually looks fun. Like it really does. If, if I woke up and the game was there, I would play it. Um, am I going to spend six hundred dollars on it? No, no, I'm not. But it is super cool. Uh, so there is that. Next up, RuneScape Kingdoms. This is at six thousand six hundred seventeen thousand, about three point five thousand backers. There were about twelve thousand people signed up for this. So obviously, um, it's. There hasn't been the, uh, uh, that hasn't translated to the campaign. The fact that this isn't, it's an IP game, a well-loved IP game that didn't hit a million automatically is, is pretty wild. Um, and it's not even just a, a pricing. The price is actually like fairly decent. It's 80 bucks for a core pledge, which is, you know, cheap for today's standards. Gameplay all in is only 164. So, or, or 154 is what I think it's translating to. So it's, it's fairly cheap. Um, but still, you would think they're cheap would just mean more people, which means would still be a higher thing. So it's not like it's uh, getting into a million because it's so expensive or anything like that. But and 618,000 is commendable. Don't, don't get me wrong there. But I think people were just expecting something with a little bit more oomph, perhaps. So what you have is you have the, the kind of the abstract map where you're kind of moving around and stuff like that. And then you have these boss battle areas where you're battling the boss like here. Um, but it's still fairly abstract, fairly kind of, I don't know, it just seems ho-hum to me. Uh, it, it definitely uh, follows, I think, suit with a lot of their other IP stuff, where a lot of it's just kind of like, it feels like a quickly thrown together game uh, with IP painted on it. Um, and that stands in stark contrast with my experience with Resident Evil, uh, which was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Um, that's like the third version of it, so they've really been able to iterate on it. And uh, Bardsung. Bardsung is like their whole new creation, and that seems to be really good. This one doesn't seem to be that way. So they actually offered to give me some time to play with it. I didn't uh, take them up on that offer just because it's not my style of game anyway. It wouldn't do them a lot of good. It wouldn't do me a lot of good. It wouldn't do you a lot of good uh, to subject me to that. Um, I think for the people that enjoy this kind of stuff, they're going to love it. And uh, I love the style. I love the attention to detail, especially with the different minis and the stats and all that when it comes to RuneScape. I think the IP works. It's just a style game. is isn't necessarily for me. It's far too uh, lightweight. And I think uh, people were maybe expecting more of a dungeon crawl style thing, uh, if you ask me. Next up, The Breach, 419,000. 2,600 backers, six days to go. Uh, another underperformer, I feel. Um, Ludus Magnus Studio normally can pull its weight when it comes to uh, these these campaigns, even with the issues they've had um, in the past when it comes to delivery, when it comes to issues with those deliveries, the timing of them and stuff like that. Uh, there's they've, they've had some issues, yet they, uh, they, they, they tend to run a campaign pretty well. Uh, this one just... It's kind of falling, I think, a little flat for a lot of people, um, and I, I think, I think part of it is just like it, like see, like the, it just doesn't seem like a whole lot there per se. They're doing the very standard thing, by the way. So you get this core box, which has you know like quite a few repeat minis, but you know that's really about it. Um, but then you can get the expansion that has the big Chronos kind of box, right? This is their standard thing. 45 bucks for a big mini um, that that just, I don't know. To me, it's very formulaic. It feels like every other Ludus Magnus Studio campaign structure-wise. So minis look cool. Uh, theme looks neat. Uh, but it, yeah, it's just kind of, kind of eh. And I, I, I don't know if it's because people feel their games are eh or what. Um, I'm not sure. I really like the DEI stuff for my favorite game by them. And I'm excited to talk about that later in this video actually moving on we have arcs another one million dollar breaker um and you know honestly i i think it's it's from not just this campaign but many campaigns of goodwill and just making quality product that people enjoy so is the campaign perfect no 
uh, when it comes to how it's laid out, but they do offer some information and then offer you to go get more information. Like you, like you saw here, there's, there, there's a print and play, it's a tabletop simulator, uh, you can download the rules, there's a video talking about it. So um, they're, they're definitely you know putting in their effort. I think more could be done outside of those external things. Um, but either way, uh, it's it's certainly unique. And I think that's kind of how they're pitching it too, is that it, it's kind of unique. It's not really like another game. Uh, they don't even give it a genre, and I think that's on purpose. Next up, Batman Gotham City Chronicles Season 3 also broke a million out, 7,000 plus backers, seven days still to go. So they are still doing quite well here. Um, they're definitely doing a lot of RPG unlocks. It's, I think definitely the focus here is the RPG stuff. Um, that just seems to be the case to me. Uh, this, by the way, a Batman Azrael miniature. Uh, yes, that's freaking awesome. I love that. So there are unlocking some cool stuff still too. Uh, that it's um, you know outside like this uh, uh, dog miniature and stuff like that outside the RPG, but still I think mostly RPG stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited for the solo co-op mode for sure. Like 100%, I'm I'm gonna be getting that and. Uh, um, kind of completing the these three seasons that it's had now, which is pretty wild. Uh, in the pledge manager, they're adding a whole bunch of stuff. This would be multiple millions if it had the stuff in here, but they're just going to do it in the pledge manager. So stuff like a big storage box for season two, like all those minis that are loose, I'll be in on that too for sure. Next up, we have Doc Fighters, the Ale War, sixty-four thousand dollars. So actually doing quite well for how indie I think this is, and it's super unique too. So you have these different like zeppelins and and uh, airplanes and stuff like that. You have two different tiers here. You can kind of see here, uh, ones like in, up in the clouds or whatever, and then they have these little gear systems that. Uh, you, you can adjust as you need to as well. So yeah, definitely looks super neat. Um, and there's some videos on it on, on kind of how it plays and, and, and what people think about it. Next up, Microcosmos, 59,000, uh, six days ago. I'm surprised this didn't actually do better. It's kind of like a tiny epic tactics kind of thing or a tiny epic game, I should say. Uh, and that it's in this micro box. It's this very small box. Looks like a pretty involved uh, a little, little game though. Like I think that's actually pretty cool. You can see the size, very small. Uh, very much, a, I think, a cool travel game. If you're worried about dry, bringing a whole lot, this would be something that I think I would really look into. Uh, more than a lot of the Tiny Epic games, actually. I wasn't impressed with the Tiny Epic tactics I got, at least. Um, but this actually looks pretty neat. Actually has quite a few pieces and tokens and stuff like that. And again, it's cheap. So there's that too. Next up, we have Crossroad Ends, uh, the Innkeeper Creed, the Innkeeper's Creed. This is an engine building game where you're building your inn and trying to gain favor from different uh, uh, types of people. Uh, so you have like you know the rich people and stuff like that. So each person, each player, kind of gets their mini and then builds their uh, their little inn. But there is some interaction with um, uh, other players, and then there are these cards that uh, you kind of have to react to. Each person has to. So uh, yeah, overall, I think uh, as far as engine builders go, this is one I would enjoy more than others just because there's a little bit of more interaction. Uh, so it's not just what you're doing, uh, but a lot of the interaction seems to be like, you, you almost like negative to other people. So maybe you'll like that, maybe you don't. Uh, definitely a cool uh, theme and idea, and I like that. Next up, Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Guys, in stark contrast to Kingdom Death Monster, which I'll be talking about soon, Aeon Trespass Odyssey, which came out well afterwards, is already having their unboxing video. So if you want to see the unboxing video, here's the Wave 1 unboxing. You can go and watch that. Um, I have not watched it because I like to go into unboxings as raw as possible. I don't want to have other people put thoughts in my head. I don't want to like just regurgitate what I saw somebody else say or look at or something like that. I try to get it as as authentic as possible is the first time seeing it. So I have not watched it. I'll have to watch it afterwards. Um, but I mean, as, as you can see, they are definitely like pumping this out. And so I'm so excited for you guys to get this stuff soon. Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's a great game and you guys are going to have a lot of fun with it. I think DEI, one of, again, my favorite game by Ludus Mass Studio, finally has ships so that is exciting i can't wait to get the final game and play it and enjoy it let's talk about kingdom of the monster let's round it out here as an fyi last update so the update before this new one we got or i guess 
I think two updates ago, and March 31st, we got this mini Gambler's Chess update that says they are down to 30 outstanding pieces of artwork with a current team of seven artists working hard on them, and then that they have been spending their evenings turning up the table uh, results and uh, tuning up the table results of the philosophies, and the playtesters are on their final tracks through the campaign, and that they hope to return in April with firm news about printing. This was back in March, right? Now we are in the end of May, so this has been two months now, and we have another update, a Gambler's Chess update. Now first, I'm just gonna point out here that there's a lot more due now than what was before, I guess. Uh, all the story event artwork for the book is now finished. There's one philosophy that still has some missing artwork, but that's nearly there. So here, it alludes to seven artists working hard on them. I'm assuming working hard means pretty much full time. So seven artists working 40 hours a week for two months, on 30 pieces of artwork couldn't finish 30 pieces of artwork that just seems wild to me uh that's some slow artists so do they like take a lot of naps or something um i've known uh, uh several artists that that do art kind of like this um and uh yeah they they, they can pump them out pretty quick uh, and then of course there's, it's, it's iterative, right? So you do something, but you don't spend like a bajillion hours finalizing something until you know it's right. So you do quick sketches and they can do quick sketches to kind of get you an idea of like position and layout, camera angle and all that kind of stuff very, very quickly. When I was talking to one, even just about my logo, we went through a whole bunch of different things and they were just kind of whipping it around and stuff like that. Uh, seven artists working hard on this for two months and you still still aren't done with the 30 pieces of art. Anyway, that seems wild, but whatever. Um, one thing that's important here is that there's not a single apology or sorry in this at all, uh, not even the inclination of that. Um, in fact, uh, all, all he feels apparently is pride in uh, how much he's raised money-wise and about how amazing the product is, um, but otherwise doesn't really feel bad at all about these delays, multi multi multiple multiple year delays uh which is which is is kind of frustrating right that that uh er, earlier in the year he even had to make an update where he made an email like for people to complain because he knows people are upset but he doesn't feel sorry that people are upset he just knows it he he realizes it and he's like hey if you're not in it then don't do it um so very egotistical in how he's acting from what i can tell uh towards backers and that's really unfortunate and i hope he uh um realizes how much money he's taken from people for years and uh, uh, how long they've been waiting. Uh, the, the, the sad joke is how many people have died from COVID uh, since they backed Kingdom Death the Monster. How many people are dead and don't need this game anymore at this point uh, because it's taken so long? So those are the kind of comments that are being made on this Kickstarter, and yet there's no apology and no, no sorry, which is really unfortunate and, it, and it's kind of funny right so like he mentions he mentions stuff like wanting to get looking into more child care and leaning on families so that they can increase daily working hours yet here he was talking about working evenings and so if he's not working eve like like what what time of child care is this if it's is it during the day are you only working evenings it was it seemed like he was working days and evenings so he's already working day and evenings what's the child care common i don't know but it also is funny because it's and it finally feels like it's time to pick up the pace and sprint towards the finish line it was time to pick up the pace like three years ago dude like i'm, I'm sorry adam but you should have picked up the pace quite a while from there um they hired another employee so that's good i guess they're making plenty of money because i mean of course underneath this is all just like you know more stuff that you can buy and and stuff they're selling this came alongside uh, the spring sale or the sorry the summer sale where they're they're they're, they're selling different minis and different art and it, ironically it has rules and it has art that's complete but i guess they could complete that art but not 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 the art for the the gambler's chest um, all the monster related content has had its first copy editing pass. Typically we do three passes on everything and all. Why was this not mentioned here? 
All we mentioned was 30 pieces of artwork and we're finished with the playtesting. But nothing about all this copy edi editing pass that they need to do for every monster related content. The scout discovery cards are waiting on their smaller art assets. So there's more art that needs to be done. Uh, he hasn't laid out the token sheet yet. So that's not ready to go. And the glossary section apparently isn't updated and needs to be updated. Um, but I mean, I'm assuming they knew the glossary wasn't updated here. So I don't know, it just it just seems like a big bummer that, uh, and by the way, before this, like if you wanna go even before before the April one, right? Which was right here, this is when we got it. We got nothing here and then we got more gambler's chest here. But before this, like nothing uh, is proceeding apace. Excited to share new, uh, new info soon. And this one, same kind of thing, but we're getting closer every single day. Art is getting finalized. Layouts are there and testing continues. That's it. It's one sentence per. And that's it for this entire year. There's two sentences plus a tiny little paragraph. And then suddenly all of this stuff that still needs to be done. But don't worry. He suspects that it's about 90%, 97%. He says, I'd say that the project is now 97% complete. How he figures 97%, I don't know. However, 97% of like this five years is about like 55 days. He's saying that he's expecting it in perhaps July. So that actually works out if he barely makes it at the end of July, assuming he actually even did the math on the 97%. Uh, that being said, look at that. Also more art. Yay. <laughs> I love all this extra art. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, it, it's just... It's really unfortunate, the attitude. Um, and it's unfortunate that only now are we actually seeing a bulleted list of items that needs to be done. For this entire year, we haven't gotten that. It is now the sixth month. We are halfway through the year. So for the last half of a year, we've gotten nothing. And then finally, we have all this stuff. And oh, well, we need all these art assets here. And we have this art asset here. There's no mention of the seven artists that are working hard in this. I don't know if they still are or not, because it sounds like they still have work to do. And if it took them two months to do 29 pieces of art, assuming that these smaller art assets aren't part of that 30, if they are, then they did even less. Would they do like complete one art asset every two months? Is, 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 is that the turnout rate? Um, if so, I, I feel like you need new artists, to be honest. Um, I, I don't know. It just, it, it's the unfortunate part is the, 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 the lack of apology, if nothing else, just the attitude around it is kind of unfortunate. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's unfortunate that only just now do you feel like it's worth picking up the pace and only just now do you feel uh, energized in doing this and finishing this out. And it's only now that you decide to communicate uh, actual work items and give people an idea of instead of uh, it's working apace and pencils down and all this other kind of BS stuff. Um, Adam Poot seems to uh, string people along and and his kind of fake update updates uh, when it comes to progress more than uh, many of the other campaigns I I cover. Like like this makes sub the Subterra guy look like he's pretty prompt and actually letting people know what's going on and not just kind of lying through his teeth. I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know what to think about this. So you guys, let me know. What, what are are you happy with this? Is this is this good? I mean, I guess it's more information. It's all with like a I'm amazing attitude and I don't feel bad at all uh, attitude and, and you know um, just I don't know. It, I just don't like the attitude. It stinks. It just stinks. Um, not to end it on a bad note though, because dear Lord, there was a lot here. Uh, Mythic Games is making changes. Come on's announcing new stuff. There's like what, three to four million dollar plus campaigns going on right now. There is a ton of stuff. Osworn is delivering. Uh, they are like are gonna be delivering like within months. So super excited to see that finally arrive at people's doors and you guys get to enjoy that. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, just all around wild and crazy update. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye guys.